awkward waving because I never know how to start a video, even still. But anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, intros are rough sometimes. Anyway, so this is going to be part two to my part one. Well, I didn't know it was going to be a part one when I made it at the time. But this is like my dating life, dating history, dating experiences, whatever. I had so much fun with part one, which I made a few weeks ago or a week ago or so, um, that I wanted to come back with a part two. So let's do that. And I have my notes up here, my handy dandy little friend to help me just with my thoughts. And I've just been adding to this the past few days. And Let's just get right on into it and we're going right. Because that would suck if we weren't. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, there are plenty of fish in the sea. And that can mean a lot of things. You can see that as your fish will come back to you or your fish is still not known as of yet. And so just know if you go through a breakup, if it's terrible, if it's hard, if you go through a breakup and it's easier and it was supposed to happen and it was meant to be that you're not supposed to be with that person and I stand by my quote sometimes not being meant to be is meant to be that's true too but just however the relationship ended just know that you can still find your person your person is still out there there's many more people in the world we have, we have billions even and you are sure to find somebody and someone is sure to find you and overprotective and controlling parents in my past relationships that is a huge thing that I've had to face in my life. And my mom has always been very controlling and protective over me, just her parenting style and her attitude towards me. And that can be very, I guess detrimental is the word if that's pronounced right. Um, I don't know. It's just, it's her style, her way of parenting me. And being on my own, I'm able to date how I want. And I can be intimate if I want to. I don't have to ask for permission. I don't have to. Be controlled by my mom like I was sneaking around the house when I lived at home not sneaking around the house but kind of and I was kind of quieter about my relationships if you can call them that they weren't very healthy they were more toxic than anything else but I was just kind of a rebellious teenager at the time a young adult and I wasn't being wise or careful or safe and now being on my own like I look at that so much differently if that's the right phrase to use <laughs> English, I can't English. It's still early in the morning and it's daylight saving. So I feel like it's an hour different and it is. Um, but yeah, it's so nice to be on my own because I can now date how I want on my agenda, on my own accord. Like it's up to me. Um, if they make you feel like you're on edge or you're wa wa walking on eggshells, like you're not perfect enough for them, then that's when the relationship just won't work out. And I've had to face that in my life. Sorry if I'm not phrasing things right. I'm still really tired. <laughs> I'm trying to get everything right. Um, but you want a partner who makes you feel safe and comfortable and confident and special. And you don't want to feel like you're not enough, like you're not worthy or enough. You're not good enough for them. Um, so I remember I technically tried alcohol for the first time. It was more like a fizzy drink. I can't think of the name. I still have it in my fridge until I go check. But it was very light like it was a light drink it wasn't like a hard duty alcoholic beverage and I slept over that was the first time I slept over at a guy's house and that was also the first time that I tried a drink like for real instead of like trying it with an ex-boyfriend which wasn't the best experience <laughs> he wasn't an ex at the time but anyway um so that was like the first alcohol I tried for real and it's very warm like I remember my chest felt kind of hot and cozy it was weird and that was the first time that I slept over at a guy's house. And the experience was different. He was kind of cold, like his personality wasn't very friendly. And he eventually unfriended me on Snapchat, which is fine. I've done the same thing to other people. But I don't know, I just thought that that was interesting, that experience, sleeping over at a guy's house. And I left first thing in the morning too. Like, I don't know, so that was my experience with trying it. Like it was basically with an almost stranger Basically, it was a stranger. We talked for a little bit, and then I went over to his house, and I spent the night, and I tried alcohol. Like, just the experience wasn't what I would have thought. I would have preferred if I went out with, like, a girlfriend to a bar or something, you know, or something along those lines. And I can't get that back, but I can always make that experience a thing. I can always choose that. You know, I could choose to try alcohol again with friends or do it on a more fun, well-rounded experience. Um, 
I respect myself and my dreams and I stand by that. I think that's huge. Um, I don't know if it's my personality being so girly, but sometimes men just don't appreciate me. They don't respect me. They don't honor me. And I think that's also because I need to be more set in stone about my boundaries and what I'm okay with so that I don't feel that way. I don't feel hurt or ran over. You know, that's important too. Um, and my dreams, like, you want your partner to respect and honor your dreams, like your wishes and your hopes. And you want them to be understanding of it. And you want them to align with yours, you know, like you respect their dreams back in, in return. Have a plan, act on it. Um... I thought about this like you want to think about it long and hard like your long-term plan your short-term plan you want to think about what you want and you want your partner to be included in that and if you need to take a break from dating and I am or get to that um, then that's fine too so you can like reevaluate replan reschedule um, and then my previous ex I felt so close to him and I still I still do but it's just sometimes I was like, I can't live without him. I can't imagine life without him. If we got back together, that'd be amazing. If we don't, I'd be understanding. But there were points on and off the past few years that I've known him. And it's ludicrous to think this, but I was like, I can't live without you. And that's so damaging to the self-esteem and to the human spirit. You can move on without a partner. You can. It can be really hard and you can really love them. But you can move on without them. And... It will be okay. It will always be okay. You, you you lived without them for years before you met them, and you can do it again years after them, you know? And I just remember that we clicked right away. And you want to click with your person. You want to click with them. You want things to flow, the conversation and the vibes and the feeling, you know? And that's how we were. And I hope I can find that again if that's meant to be for me. Um, and this is funny. He didn't say it exactly like this, but I'll paraphrase it in my own way. Friend says, best way to get over someone is to get under someone, which is kind of sort of terrible to say. But I don't know. I thought it was kind of funny. So let me get to that part. Um, so I'm seeing two guys right now, and I've been talking to them since November. I met them both in November when I started to date again. And they're both really nice, good guys. One lives 30 minutes away. The other one is moving to the same town as the other one, which is kind of funny. So both my Tinder boys live in the same place now. Or they will here pretty soon. But... I just need a break right now. Like, meeting new people, making new friends, dating, getting yourself out there, putting yourself out there. Like, t to me it takes a toll because I'm such an introvert and I have anxiety. And the social anxiety that I have, I can only do it in waves. And I've been in quite the wave. Like, I need me a good break. And so I deleted my Tinder. I deleted my... Is it Hinge? I want to say Hitch, but that's the movie that's different. Yeah, I think so. Um, I still have my Bumble app for BFF, only for BFF, but I'm not dating, talking to any guys other than those two who I'm still seeing. And it feels really, really good. Like, I don't have any anxiety on my calendar. And anxiety on my calendar would mean, like, meeting new people and meeting new guys and going on dates. And for some people, that's so much fun. And for me, I kind of dread and fear it. And it's not my most favorite. So it's going to be nice to just kind of step back, take a breath, and just work on me and myself and I and just calm the freak down. <laughs> so I just wanted to say that. Um, let's see. So yeah, friend says best way to get over someone is to get under someone else. <laughs> and I thought that was really funny. Um, my counselor actually told me um, about my previous ex, the one who I was really close to. She told me to ask if I could call him. And I sent him the message on Monday and now here it is Sunday. And I didn't hear back till late last night, early this morning, whenever it was. And he said that, like, the app was down. He couldn't see my text or anything. And so I was, like, feeling so ignored and hurt all week. I was like, oh, no. But my counselor was right. It might be a good thing. Well, I don't know yet. I assume she's right. I'm guessing she's right. But it might be a good thing for us to just talk on the phone for a little bit since I saw him last a few weeks ago. And... Like, he's a really good guy, and so dreamy. <laughs> but I'm just, I'm grateful for that. Like, he's okay with calling, and I'm really grateful for that. Um, so, I have to explain at least with some of them I did. But some I just immediately deleted and ghosted. So, that's true. The guys who 
were putting in the effort, I decided to tell them, like, for my clear conscience, that was what my friend called it. He was like, you don't have to do that anymore. Like, you can just delete them if you want. But I was like, I have to let them know before I delete them. <laughs> so I did. And I just explained that I'm not ready to date right now, which is true. And I just need a break, which is true. And so two of them gave me their numbers, which, which was really funny. And one of them said, even if it takes you forever to get back to me, here's my number. Text me. Even if it takes forever, even if it takes you a long time, just get back to me. You know, I thought that was kind of cute. Um, and I remember I would just always say to the pervy guys, I was like, someone asked me to be their girlfriend. Sorry, I can't talk anymore. <laughs> um, but yeah, while in this headspace, like it is exhausting. It is exhausting to be in the dating groove, like wanting to date. And I did want to date for a time, but I just need a break right now. Like it's exhausting to be in this headspace. Um, so it's going to be nice to take a step back and take a deep breath, take a break and a breath. Um, so I I joked with my friend, I was like, they secretly want to kill me now, right? You know, because I unfriended them. <laughs> and he's like, oh my gosh. He said, I don't owe anybody anything, and which is awesome because I just, I don't feel good when people delete me. So I didn't want to do that back to people. I don't want to do that either. But he's like, you don't owe them anything. You can respect yourself and you don't have to say anything. You can stand up for yourself and just do it. Like you, you don't owe anybody anything. That's so true. Um, and they were either perverted or not my type or they were trying to look for something serious when I wasn't. Um, there was this one guy who was kind of pushy and wanting to hang out and on my anxiety, I can't do that. Like you have to be on my calendar, like in my notes app, you have to be on schedule. <laughs> and he was like, do you want to hang out today? And I was like, we just started talking to her today and I very kindly explained it and I was like, yeah, well, just with my anxiety, I like to plan things I don't really do last minute or out of the blue, like, mm. and so he was like, short notice, quote, and I was just like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, so, I don't know, I wasn't a big fan of that, but in the end, it didn't even matter because he did give me his number, but I'm not talking to him anymore right now, I'm just taking a break. So I kind of gave Hinge a shot. I was talking to about like six guys, but in the end it didn't matter because I'm taking a break. Um, and then one of my male friends swayed me in blocking him. So I'll talk about this. And I'm almost done talking. Almost. <laughs> so he's a really good friend. He's one of the two Tinder boys that I'm still seeing. He's really nice. And I call him Tinder boys. <laughs> but um, he just didn't know how to feel about my previous ex, and I was just asking him some questions about it to get his thoughts and get an idea, a feel for what I should do next, like my next step. And he was just very much, like, protective over me, I felt like, and I felt like he really cared, and he just didn't really understand the full story, and so he thought that I should block him. And so I did very briefly, and then I unblocked him again. But I need to make this decision for myself, and I can't go to people to ask for help in my relationships or friendships or people ships, you know, um, and then I don't mind sex on the first date, and I'm proud of myself for not every time, so there's one date specifically, the guy could not kiss, he was really tall, really cute and attractive, cute personality too, kind of awkward like me, so we would have really meshed well, but he smokes weed, and he can't kiss, we didn't sleep together the night that he came over, I invited him over for the first date, it was just casual, like movie, hanging out, you know, just chill, and I just wasn't feeling it like I liked him in a way but in a way I didn't and I just didn't want to give myself to him and I'm so proud of myself because with the other previous boys I've been more casual with them like as in sex like casual sex and it just feels really good like I don't know anyway um I tried too hard with my snapchat boys and I was giving each a morning text and not doing that again <laughs> so this is kind of funny um just like how it sounds, just as I said, I was giving them so much attention and sometimes I was left on red or left on open, like they opened the Snapchat and they didn't say anything. And I was giving so much effort and energy for them each. And I was talking to, at one point, almost like 10 of them and every day I was trying to talk to them. And I was just like, what am I doing? Like, do I even want to go on dates with these guys? Like a lot of them I didn't even meet yet. And so I'm not going to do that again. I'm going to be more selective and I won't give out my Snapchat. I'm just going to talk to them through the apps, like the dating apps. Um, let me just see if I talked about everything. Let me see. Yeah, I think I did. 
This is one thing though. Feels like my parents don't want me to get married. And that is so funny to me. And I think I'm talking pretty briefly. Am I really only talking for like, I'm gonna guess 20 minutes? 15, wow, my last video was 30. Well, that was more like my dating history where I wasn't using notes to help me get my thoughts together. But anyway, um, yes. So because my parents have been so controlling over me and my relationships in the past, now that I'm on my own, it's different because I can date for myself and by myself, like not with my mommy and daddy holding my hand. You know, just very invasive of them. Uh, anyway, I felt like sometimes they don't want me to get married because they would be so controlling and so involved in who I'm dating. And it's a good feeling to be on my own. Like I could date honestly whoever I want now. And that's a good feeling to have. I'm not going to right now because I'm taking a break. But maybe in a month or two, I'll change my mind and I'll get back out there. But it feels really good to just take a breather, take a break, have this downtime. And I love it. Like, I don't feel anxious. I would always feel anxious the day of a first date. Even though they'd be really chill and casual, they would just be mostly at my place. Like, that's been my dates. Like, they come over and we just talk. And we mostly talk over the movie. We don't, we don't really watch over the movie. And I think talking is the key to dating. Because how else are you going to get to know somebody? Just talk with them and talk to them and share things. And you don't want to overshare, but you want to share enough to where you're getting to know the person and they're getting to know you back. But, yeah. So, this video was really fun to make. And... I guess I'm going to go now. And I'm not going to go on a date. <laughs> okay.